Hi, and welcome to this video. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you the easiest way to remember the blood flow of the heart and the different parts that make up the heart. If you're studying for an exam, at first these 12 different elements of the heart with its different flows in and out can be confusing, maybe a little daunting too. You need to memorize the four different valves, the different chambers of the heart, the veins, the arteries, flows in and out of oxygenated and unoxygenated blood. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you will understand the workings and be able to memorize it all, everything that you need to know. I'll break the heart down into smaller element, elements and group together the valves and chambers. And also there's some memory tricks at the end. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get you being a heart blood flow genius. Okay, so a little about myself. My name is Terry Barnes and at the time of making this video, I'm studying uh, for my level three certificate to become a personal trainer. At first, I struggled to understand the heart, but as soon as I got to grips with the flow, the ins and outs, I found simple ways to remember the valves, which sides, which, etc. It just became very simple, along with a few tricks to help me remember. Having learnt this, I thought I would make this video to help anybody studying the heart. I will start by going over the anatomy of the heart, a basic, uh, a quick tutorial of the two sides to help you understand the blood flow through the heart. There are 12 parts which make up the heart and I've split the explanation into two halves, right and left. This makes things easier and basically both sides have six similar parts. Uh, these parts are as follows. There are entry veins, there's a top heart chamber, then a separating, separating uh, atrioventricular valve, a bottom heart chamber, an exit valve, and then finally an exit artery. These six parts are mirrored on each side of the heart with slightly different names. But the good news is, once you've learnt and understood the names and the flow of the right side, then although the goal of the left side of the heart is different, its contents and blood flow is just the same. The simple memory tricks uh, that stop you confusing one side to the other are explained at the end. And the practical reason for splitting the heart into two halves is because the right side of the heart pumps unoxygenated blood, which is commonly noted as blue on diagrams. Uh, also, think of the veins you can see through your skin, which appear, uh, appear to be blue. Of course, the blood is actually red. And then the left side, which carries oxygenated blood, which is normally always shown in red on diagrams. Here we have the diagram of the heart, uh, showing it uh, with the right and left side. You'll see that it actually says right on the left and left on the right, and that's because we're talking of the right side of the patient or client's heart. In the same way, if they were stood in front of us, their right hand would actually be on your left and their left hand would be on your right. Um, so starting again on the right hand side, uh, this is where the unoxygenated blood flows into the top chamber, the right atrium. This blood has a very small amount of oxygen left in it. It has been around the body and it now has returned to the heart where it needs to be pumped uh, out of the heart to, um, to gain oxygen from the lungs. So it enters from above via the superior vena cava and enters from below, uh, anywhere from below the heart, enters in via the inferior vena cava. Both of these enter into the right atrium, the top right hand chamber of the heart. And um, they flow from this chamber down into the bottom chamber, the right ventricle, and they travel through a valve. It's a one way valve called the tricuspid valve. Once the blood has entered into the right ventricle, it then travels through a second valve, the pulmonary valve, which takes it into the pulmonary artery. This artery is going to travel into the pulmonary system. So pulmonary is another word for lungs. So this blood is going to travel into the lungs where it will be saturated with oxygen. It then leaves the lungs and travels back to the heart via the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins enter into the top left atrium. This is the, the top left chamber and it flows down through the mitral valve, or it's also known as the bicuspid valve, travels down through into the left ventricle. 
this oxygenated blood now needs to travel around the rest of the body to the extremities to the organs to the brain so it travels through the aortic valve into the aorta uh, this is the main artery which will transport the blood around the rest of the body okay so that is a basic explanation next i'll go into more detail was a quick and basic explanation of the blood flow through the heart but now I'm going to go into a lot more detail uh, and also uh, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to remember certain parts of the heart um, listen to the end of the video where I sum up give you your takeaways uh, basically your, your memory tricks at the end so here we go uh, talking about again the blood flow through the heart uh, but uh, as I've said in a lot more detail so this unoxygenated blood that's entered into the right side of the heart gives the heart a goal. The goal for the right side is to get the blood to the lungs. This blood that's returning back to the body uh, has very little oxygen left in it. It went out of the heart full of oxygen. It's done its job and, and the uh, oxygen has now uh, traveled to the rest of the body and this blood is now returning with very little oxygen. The blood returns to the uh, right side of the heart via the superior vena cava from any uh, part of the body above the heart and below the heart this blood returns via the inferior vena cava both the inferior and superior vena cavas um, terminate into the top uh, chamber of the heart called the right atrium so once the right atrium has received this unoxygenated blood on the right hand side the blood is then forced through a valve called the tricuspid valve now the tricuspid valve is made up of three triangular flaps of skin uh, these are cusps and uh, so this is where the valve gets its name from the three cusps of skin give the valve its name the tricuspid valve once the blood has passed through this it travels into the second chamber this is the right ventricle. The blood from the right ventricle is now forced by the uh, right side muscle wall uh, through the next valve, which is the pulmonary valve, which takes the blood through into the pulmonary artery. Uh, this blood then travels into the pulmonary system. So these are basically your right and left lungs pulmonary is a common uh, name it's uh, another name for lungs now the blood that's been circulating around the pulmonary system returns to the left hand side of the heart um, this enters into the heart via the pulmonary veins um, so the goal now of the left hand side of the heart is to get this blood pumped all around the body it's going to go out to the extremities it's going to go to the organs and of course out to the brain so this is perhaps a good time to point out in the diagram if you look you'll see that the left hand side of the heart uh, the muscle wall is a lot thicker than on the right hand side of the heart and the reason for this is the blood on the right hand side has only got to travel out to the pulmonary system so it goes out to the lungs which are sat just to the right and the left of the heart whereas uh, the left hand side of the heart has to pump this blood all the way out to all the extremities out to the brain um, so it needs a bigger muscle this is why the the muscle on the left hand side is a thicker muscle to be able to create more blood pressure to get this blood to where it needs to go and obviously to to do the heart's goal so this blood now that enters via the uh, pulmonary veins is uh, saturated in oxygen uh, just like on the other side of the heart it then enters into the top chamber which is again the atrium but this time of course it's called the left atrium the left atrium um, then forces the blood down through a valve again but uh, this is now called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve it's actually probably better well it's better better known as the uh, mitral valve 
but um, I wanted to put it in here as the bicuspid valve because it is called that and um, also you may have gathered that the fact it's called a bicuspid valve means that it has actually only got two cusps as opposed to three cusps so again it's a good way to remember which is which on one side or the other uh, to note that there is a difference and um, of course so that you know the name uh, derives from the fact that it has two cusps and it's the bicuspid valve um, also just um, before I talk about the left ventricle um, there, there can be a little bit of confusion over the the two valves that separate the chambers because obviously you've got the bicuspid valve you've got the tricuspid valve you've got the mitral valve but to confuse things even even more um, both of the valves on either side that separate the chambers uh, have a name and uh, that's the atrioventricular valve and this is because it's a valve that separates the atrium and the ventricle so both valves on either side are actually atrioventricular valves so you may have you may hear of, of either of them being called that because that's the type of valve that they are but of course they do have their own individual name which i've gone over but just to repeat um, even though both of them are atrioventricular valves that separate the atrium and the ventricle the right hand side has three cusps and is called the tricuspid valve and uh, the left hand side has two cusps and is the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve so lots of different names for these two valves uh, which can be a little bit confusing but hopefully I've explained it well here and um, you could certainly replay this part of the video if, if you need a bit of clarity and again I'm going to give you a memory tip very soon uh, that to, to enable you to remember which valve is on which side anyway carrying on um, uh, we're now talking about the final chamber the left ventricle um, the, the oxygenated blood has now left uh, the top chamber down through the uh, valve into the left ventricle the thicker walled heart on this side now pumps this blood uh, through the final valve um, which is the aortic valve traveling through this valve one-way valve again into the uh, main artery artery uh, the aorta the left hand side of the heart has done its job it's managed its goal and that's to get the oxygenated blood um, that's returned from the pulmonary system out of the heart into the aorta enabling the aorta to transport this uh, oxygenated blood around the body out to the extremities brain etc and of course it returns and the uh, as um, with, with a little oxygen and the the whole cycle starts again one thing I haven't mentioned I haven't talked about perhaps a, a 13th element if you like um, this uh, this is connected to the valves um, the two valves that separate uh, the two chambers so that's your uh, tricuspid valve and your bicuspid valve both of these valves as all the valves are are one-way valves but these valves uh, in particular have tenderness cords they have tendons which uh, support and uh, prevent the backflow uh, of blood between the two chambers um, so we have these tender cords uh, on all of the flaps so that's the two flaps on the left hand side of the heart and the three flaps on the right hand side of the heart uh, enabling the the prevention of backflow of blood between the two chambers um, so again these are tendons and these are called tenderness cords well there we have it that was the more detailed explanation of the blood uh, flow through the heart I uh, hope you found that interesting and, and useful and if you did please uh, share that like button now um, click the like button share the video if you like and maybe you'd like to subscribe to my channel 
So uh, some simple uh, tricks now, uh, simple memory aids uh, on how to remember different uh, parts of the heart. First of all, um, you need to know that um, the blood travels in and out of the body in different ways, and this helps you with the mechanics of the, the heart. So the uh, blood travels into the heart via a vein, and it travels away from the heart uh, through an artery. So it's important that you remember this. So and it's easy to remember because the word vein has uh, the spelling I-N at the end. So that helps you to remember that uh, veins carry blood in to the heart. Um, likewise, the, the word artery has uh, an A at the beginning. It doesn't have the, the word in in it. So that helps you to remember that uh, an artery carries blood away from the heart. So again, a vein carries blood in to the heart and an artery carries blood away from the heart. Uh, that's a handy tip for you. And then next I want to talk about the tri and the bicuspid uh, valves. Um, as you now know, the tri has three cusps and the bi has two cusps. The bi is also known as the mitral. In fact, uh, that's pr it's probably better known as the uh, mitral valve but I wanted to include the bicuspid valve so that you know this name. And of course, this helps you to remember that it has two flaps, uh, two cusps, whereas the tri has three flaps of skin or three cusps. Now, try before you buy is a, a common thing. We all like to try before we buy. And uh, this helps you to remember. So if you can remember this saying, try before you buy, when it comes to these two valves, this helps you to remember which side of the heart they are on. Uh, try before buy. Try is on the first part of the heart we talk about, the right hand side, and the by is on the second part of the heart we talk about, the left hand side. And now the uh, different chambers of the heart. There are four chambers, um, and um, as you already know, it's easy to, to know that uh, the right uh, atrium and the right. Uh, ventricle is on the right hand side and the left atrium and the left ventricle are on the left hand side simple but of course some people may get a little bit confused or at some point point you may forget whether the atrium's on the top or the bottom or whatever so this is simple they're in alphabetical order this is all you need to remember the fact they're in alphabetical order means that the atrium obviously comes before ventricle and simple uh, easy to remember so right atrium is on the upper right uh, chamber is the upper right chamber and the right ventricle is the lower right chamber and likewise for the left hand side. And now my final uh, memory aid and that is to remember and I'm sure you already know this that the pulmonary system are your lungs and so Pulmonary uh, basically means lungs, or another word for pulmonary, a common word for pulmonary is the word lungs. Um, and again, the uh, pulmonary system, um, the artery, the pulmonary artery is going um, out of the body, as you now know. So it's taking blood away from the body. And you know, there's only one reason why we need to take blood out to the lungs, and that's because that blood needs oxygen. So it's easy to remember that the pulmonary arteries are taking the blood out of the lungs and uh, sorry, out of the heart and into the lungs so that they uh, the blood can gain oxygen. And um, also, of course, we do know that the pulmonary veins, uh, therefore, they're heading into the heart. And the only reason they would want to bring blood from the lungs into the heart is because that blood contains oxygen. Um, so that is a memory trick there. Um, you've already learnt now about uh, arteries being away from the heart and veins heading into the heart. You just simply need to remember that uh, pulmonary uh, means lungs. So anything connected to the word pulmonary will mean that it's going to be uh, the fact that this blood is going to be oxygenated or uh, unoxygenated, depending on which way it's travelling. And again, the secret there is you do know that if it's traveling to the uh, uh, lungs, to the uh, pulmonary system, the only reason for it to travel in that direction is because it needs oxygen. 
And again, if it's traveling away from there uh, or traveling into the heart, you know that then obviously this blood must be carrying oxygen. If it's coming from the uh, pulmonary system and it's heading into the heart, then obviously this blood will be carrying oxygen. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making this video. Um, thank you very much for, for listening and watching the video. As I've said, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you watch it again just to try and cement that information into your memory. Uh, please leave a like and comment below. Also, perhaps you could share it with others that you think would find this uh, beneficial. If you want to find out more about myself, uh, I have a website uh, and it's simply Terry Barnes dot co dot uk and i'll leave a link in the description below again thank you very much and have a super day